I am Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is a professionally trained actress who has honed her skills at some of the most prestigious schools and universities. She has landed some of the most coveted string roles on stages around the country. And currently, she's the voice of Sharice on MTV's hit, Hard Times of R.J. Berger. And she's here today to talk about her hit TV daytime drama, which is The Young and the Restless. Help me welcome Miss Julia Pace to the show. How you doing, Julia? Welcome to the show. Oh, I'm blessed. Thank you so much. I'm just so excited to talk to you today about everything that's going on in our lives. <laughs> I know, because you are also a newlywed. In September, you'll be married one year. So how is wedding bliss treating you? It is so good. I'm so lucky. I'm actually, I snuck into my husband's office to use the landline in his phone, you know, so I'm talking low. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you slide because he is, you know, a business owner, has a family-owned business. So thank yes, you so thank much. You. <laughs> Uh, so I'm actually in Middletown, Ohio, in the back of High Towers Petroleum right now, doing the interview. Okay. And, he, and he's actually at Dartmouth right now, um, doing a business class. So we both really value, you know, working and education and try to live the example in some ways, however we can. Oh, that is really nice. And, you know, I heard a little bit about your engagement, how he proposed. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I thought it was so cute. I read an article that he sent you <laughs> a picture by accident. Tell us about that. <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, I was in his apartment in in Ohio, and I had been in town for a while, but his sister works for the office, too, and so he showed her the ring, and um, his other sister wasn't in the office, so he text messaged his other sister, but he also text messaged me a picture of it, and I was like, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> But he accidentally text message. He wasn't going to ask me yet, but he said the he was just showing it to his sisters. Oh, so it was kind of. And like didn't he have to run home or something like that? Yeah, yeah. And then he came home and did it, and we were just like, Steven. Like it was just funny, but <laughs> but you know we have a kind of relationship where we knew from jump what we wanted. We both were like ready to settle down and start our lives together. And just grow, and that's what we're doing. And I'm really excited, and I've been really blessed. The whole year just changed my life. Young and the Restless, you know, you as an actor, you audition for so many different things. And then when you start speaking things into existence, like, I want this, I want to be married, I want a good job, I want, and believing it and doing things so that it happens, it, it happens. He, you know, when, if you set it up and you've, you know, prayed on it and done everything you can, it can happen for you. Now, for you, everything happened in a whirlwind because you met him at an NBA All-Stars, and then in a couple of months you were engaged, and now you got the Young and the Restless, so you yeah. spoke things... <laughs> Oh, girl, you better be careful what you speak because your stuff is coming to pass. <laughs> and it comes real fast. I'm telling you, it came real as soon as I was like, okay, I'm done with mess. Do you know what I'm talking about? Right. I'm not, this, it was, I remember like two or three days before. It was February. It was around Valentine's Day. I was by myself, girl, at my apartment crying. You know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, sir. It was around February 14th. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to deal with any more mess. I'm not going to, you know, talk to those guys who lied to us about certain mm -hmm. things or, you know, people who were married. You didn't, didn't know they were married. Okay, you know, girl, sometimes. preach it. I, preach it. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody out there who's listening, you know, do right and right will come to you. That's That's what I think. And, and look what happened within a year. Now, Julia, you were really born to be an actress. Why I say that? I mean, literally, you are the daughter of two beautiful actors and actresses, Julie, uh, Judy Pace and Don Mitchell. Did you always have a desire to be an actress when you were growing up because of what they've done? Yes. I don't think I really had a choice. You know, my mom, <laughs> she actually discouraged me from going to live in Los Angeles. She really encouraged me to go to New York and learn my craft, study Shakespeare, get a degree, go to Howard, do things that she didn't necessarily get the opportunity to do. And she was, I think, trying to protect me from a lot of rejection and, like, a lot of times child stars aren't, you know, successful in later in life because they don't get those skills. If you, I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But my mom really encouraged me that if I wanted to do it, to go to school and learn about theater, not just about, you know, I'm cute, I know how to sing, let me go, you know, try to be a star, but really know classical text, know how to use your instrument and how to perform from a core place. And I'm really grateful that I did that. And then my father, my stepfather, Kurt Flood, encouraged me to go ahead and get my master's degree. Mm -hmm. And so I was at Howard at the time, and I saw a poster in the hallway, and it said Denver master's degree programs, you know, auditions, free tuition. And I was like, mm, I don't know if I want to go to Denver, but I'll, I'll audition. 
And I got in the school, and I didn't pay even one cent for my my MFA. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. So I went to grad school for free. I mean, it, nothing is free in life. I mean, it was very a cultural shift from Howard, where you have this right. great supportive community, to Denver, where I was like the only one in my class. You know. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I hear in read, but right between the lines. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I went to Grambling State, so I understand what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, all right, Grambling, great school. So. And you also studied at Oxford University. Yes, I did. I did semesters abroad. And I actually, another thing where I was, we had a little group at Howard called the Moors. And we like, you know, like kids who like Shakespeare. And there was a program and we said, oh, let's go sign up for this program. It was the British Academy of Dramatic Arts. And it was at Oxford University at Balliol College. And Felicia Rashad and Debbie Allen were our sponsors. And they mm-hmm. sent a group of us over and we had an amazing experience. And from that experience, I know my first job after grad school was with the Oregon Shakespeare Festival. And I know I knew the seeds were planted then. And I never imagined that from there I would be on The Young and the Restless. Do you know what I mean? Wow. <laughs> like, I thought I would be doing stage work. You know, I know how to do sword fighting and combat. But I never imagined that I would be on daytime drama, be in, Neil, be in a winter. That's, you know, my grandmother used to watch that stuff. I used to... Look at Neil, like, oh, my God, there he goes. Right. And Shamar, you know, <laughs> and now I play his wife on TV. That's crazy. And so. that, is, that is amazing because you are you are such a trained actress that you can go from Shakespeare festivals to hip-hop festivals. What are yeah. those two? It's almost like night and day. What are those two festivals like for you? Oh, wow. Um, for one, it's um, the, the New York um, Hip-Hop Theater Festival. Actually, was founded at Howard University. It was called Hip-Hop Theater Junction. And it was a combination of, like, poetry, spoken word, the five elements of hip-hop, which is, like, music, graffiti art, the turntables, and, like, just using the things that we love to create, you know, storytelling through the stage, not just through the music. And, you know, we were thinking we were young revolutionaries creating hip-hop theater, <laughs> but nothing's really, nothing's really new, you know. <laughs> but at the Shakespeare at that time was considered new and hip. It was, you know... The, it was for the common folks. Now we put it to some kind of elevated, um, you know, elitist, you know, oh, we're going to the theater. But it was actually for the common people. Those were the stories of the day. But it's just over time, we've kind of turned it into something else. Wow. Now, you also received multiple NAACP Theater Award nominations. You're a playwright, and you also did a one-woman show called um, The Interview and Heels yes. Above the Hood. Tell us about that and inspiration behind those two shows. Okay, well, Hills Above the Hood is a love of my heart. I, in the process of going to grad school, you know, you have to do auditions, and you have to, you know, have certain monologues and stories for your auditions. You have to have, like, five different ones. And I would read stuff, and I never really saw anything that spoke to me or that showed off that I was funny and zany and black and witty or kind of goofy. You know, everything is so like, oh, Lord, is me, you know. <laughs> Oh, I'm down on my soul. You know, I didn't want to do that kind of right. stuff. Right. <laughs> I mean, I love August Wilson's work. Praise God for him. I've done a million of his plays, but I'm I'm younger. I'm funny. I'm you know. I wanted something that reflected that. Yeah. So I decided to write something for myself, and for five or six of my girlfriends at the time, who were also young actresses. Who you know, one of my friends was like a mixed girl who didn't she she was it was wrote a funny story about everything she was mixed with about how people will always ask her oh girl what you mix with and she she would be kind of annoyed by the question but then she would be like i mixed with cherokee indian a little bit of black vietnamese <laughs> <laughs> and just this long list of things so they were really funny stories and i compiled them into a show called the hill the hills above the hood about growing up in Baldwin Hills, California, where this is like this upper middle class, you know, African American community. Right. Wow. So, and then the interview. What was that one about? Um, the interview. I, I did that, but a while ago. That was one of the first NAACP Theater Award nominations I did, and it was a one-person show about a young, you know, guy like going on auditions in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. and I had a couple of wigs in my, you know, bag. Like, oh, is it the, you know. <laughs> Do I need to have the curly weave today or the little afro or the, you know, like, church, you know, it was kind of a, a nod to colored museums, you know, the wig stands with, you know, how we try to fix and change ourselves. Right. 
Mm -hmm. You know, what does that mean or how can we be accepted by Hollywood standards and as opposed to what's really going on, Mm. you know. Well, that's something that happened, you know, on Young and the Restless is that when I first came on the show, I had a big wig on my head. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if you have any fans, but it was a hard challenge to, like, say, hey, can I wear my real hair on the show? You know, there are a lot of African-American businesswomen and professionals who, you know, rock it like this. So it's been... It's been a, a challenge, but, you know, Victoria Rao paved the way for a lot of things to happen, and now I have a lovely stylist on the show, and I don't know if the people can tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, was, was The Young and the Restless one of your first big roles? Because I know you did Notorious, um, the movie Notorious. and you, mm-hmm. and you well, Go ahead. No, it was actually my first major film out of school was a film called Meet Bill with Aaron Eckhart and Jessica Alba and some other people like that. But Notorious was the first commercial successfully film that I did, and that was just, it blew my mind. I just was so honored. I got to work with Angela Bassett and so many great actors from Broadway, and Notori and I became good friends from that. We were so happy because we both were on Broadway. She was in Hairspray, and I was in a small play off-Broadway called Ohio State Murders. And Twinkie, who cast the play, she surrounded like all the young women mm-hmm. were young Broadway stars and that was just really really an amazing experience and to be a part of history like you know B.I.G. that was great you know right <laughs> right yeah. it was really fun and I got to meet Jan who the real woman who I portrayed and just talking to her about stuff you know I love history so I just approached it like that and there you know it was one scene in the movie where I come knocking on the door you know, and I'm supposed to be mad, you know, come tell them to come visit your daughter. Mm-hmm. And I know I made a choice that I I wouldn't make it like typical, I'm so mad and hoochie and do, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I made a choice to just say, look, it, it was a, a different take on it. And I think the director really appreciated that. And I appreciated him for letting me show that side that all of us aren't just angry, get old baby mamas and stuff like that. Right. So, and for many of you who do not remember her role, she played the role of Notorious B.I.G.'s first baby's mama. Okay. <laughs> right. right. So, so that was the role that she played. And she went knocking on the door of uh, Faith Evans, of the character who played Faith Evans. And she wanted uh, Notorious B.I.G. to come see his daughter. So when you see the movie again, then you'll be able to see Miss Julia Pace Mitchell in her role. And then people be like, that was you? I didn't know that was you. Right. <laughs> Because it don't look like you. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that right now. And you've you've yeah. definitely made some uh some some great changes, even physically. Because you were yes. also in the Playtex commercial. You know, nice beautiful yes. full figure. So st- <laughs> now all of a sudden you didn't drop down, girl. So tell us about the weight loss and the inspiration behind it. You look fabulous. Well, thank you. Actually, it's all in the wardrobe. <laughs> Because I have, you know, like many of us, you know, I've gone from a size 10 to 16 and back down again mm-hmm. and everywhere in between. Tell me about it. But, <laughs> right. And, but I think that now I'm trying to find where healthy is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's funny. On the show, they like <laughs> it's, they dress me in, like, kind of boxier clothes. Because at first I would have, like, you know, my first couple of days on the show, I was in my bra on the bed. It was, <laughs> I don't know if you remember. <laughs> They were like, this is your husband, Malcolm, on the show, and here's the script, and we're, like, in the bed the first day of work. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's okay. jump right in. And I was really self-conscious about it, and, you know, people on blogs can be mean. Mm-hmm. But after a while, I just started to see that there's a huge fan base of women who are really happy to see a reflection of themselves in some way. And I want to represent them the best that I can. So I want to be fit and full-figured and healthy, so... That's where I am now. Right, because you look absolutely, I mean, you almost look like two different people a little bit. You know, it's amazing how sometimes weight can kind of change our look. You even look like you uh, minimize some years. You know, when you look well, at the different pictures, you even look younger. Oh, we, well, you know, I go, it depends on what pictures you're looking at. And Photoshop is a, a you know. A <laughs> it could be a friend. <laughs> Yeah, so it depends on where where I where I am, you know. Okay. Now next next I want to talk about some of the TV shows you've done. And you've been on The Closer, Cold Case, even the Dave Chappelle show. What was it like working with Dave Chappelle? That was one of my favorite jobs. I was so excited. That's another one of those things where you speak into existence. I was in Denver, Colorado, right, leaving grad school. And I was like, oh, it would be so much fun to just work on the Dave Chappelle show. Oh, I love that show. Like just talking with my sister. And 
I went to New York and I had an audition and I knew when I walked in the door, I was like, this is my job. I'm claiming it. This this is my job. (laughs) And he had everybody, this is funny. He had everybody, um, you know, audition. And he just said to me, so you went to Howard, you from DC, you know, DC. I was like, yeah. He said, say cherry pie, like you from DC. And I was like, what, what, what? And I said, okay, cherry pie. And he was like, okay, you got it. Because there's a way that people from D.C. and Baltimore say chur, like it's chur pie. It's different. It's they have, like a, di- a, they have a, di- a different type of dialect when they dialect. speak. It's dialect. It's like mm-hmm. chur pie. You go park the car. You tripping. It's like a, and if you don't pay attention to it, you know, it, it's just funny. But he knew that. And he's a, re- a lot of times people thought that Dave Chappelle was just goofy. He was one of the smartest men in the business in mm-hmm. terms of like comedy and racial, you know, tension and survival skills in it and the funny thing is he actually lives in ohio too really he lives in yellow he lives in yellow yellow springs ohio wow. and his wife have a, a ranch out here okay now do you yeah. still keep in contact with him <laughs> um the last time i saw him was in la at a comedy club and first he was doing like some 12 hour set and yeah he was just like hey how you doing we worked together on about three episodes of the third season that didn't air, but it was one of the best experiences of my life. Best experiences. Now, who would you love to work with? Who is a person that you are speaking into existence that you uh, have always admired and want to work with? Who would not say Idris Elba right now, honey? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I think he's really he's really a talented British actor, and a lot of people don't know that about him. Right. That his he does American dialect and accent. I would love to work with him. I would love to play Oprah Winfrey one day. I think that would be so great to tell her story. What and is that? you know, I think that would be really fun. And I would like to do some kind of movie where we can really discuss some of the the, the issues about our history in terms of like color discrimination light skinned girls and dark skinned girls mm-hmm. and what it means for us. I think there's a lot of story there that, you know, we haven't had an opportunity to tell. Did you see Bill Dukes? I didn't get a chance to see it. Bill Dukes, as I think it was called Dark Girls. He did a documentary. On yes, that. I heard so much about it. I didn't see it. I saw like the previews on it on Facebook and stuff like that. But he's he was one of my professors at Howard, and I really admire that he dove into that subject. But I, I can't wait to see it, though. Now, have you noticed a lot, I'm sure you have, being in the industry and being an African-American woman, because your skin color is gorgeous. When I see your pictures, well, I'm like, you look all flawless, girl. And and, and it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> so what, what kind of things have you experienced? Because, you know, they do have the light-skinned black, the dark-skinned black, even we have our Caucasian counterparts. What are some of the things that you've experienced personally in this industry? Well, I can't see. I'm one that can't complain because I'm working and a lot of people aren't working. Right, right. <laughs> but one of the things that I noticed in that I think that helped me get some of the jobs is that I would speak on the fact, hey, you know what, can we open up that light? You know, this comes from training. When you audition, if you look in, if there's no light on you, the, you, you can't see you. Mm-hmm. So, hey, when I would walk in the audition room, can we turn on some more lights and open up the window so open up the butterfly on that right there so we can get a good shot? Okay. And ask what? What's my shot? Where am I? Okay. Can you see me? Okay. Because most of the time you walk in, this lighting is set for people who are Caucasian. Mm. And though it doesn't sound very, you know, but just acknowledging something is different, and just take a few seconds to light it better. And that's not being, you know, snobby. That's just being like, look, I spent my time learning my audition. You can open up a light so you can see it. Because <laughs> you want to, you want to look your best. You your know what best. I mean? Yeah. Right? You, you really yeah. want to look your best. And, you know, and it's funny that you say that because I'm the type of person when I do photo shoots, I always ask, "Do you know how to light African American people?" Not being funny. Yeah. Just want to make yeah, not sure. Not being funny, but just want to make sure. Right. And if not, <laughs> and and if not, it's okay, maybe because you know what, I can help you. And you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, but I, I'm like, I'm glad I'm not the only one that do that because I'm not being funny. I just want to make sure I look good. We okay. <laughs> have to pay my money. <laughs> And that's part of our job. But I also noticed, you know, you go on so many 
I think the last three or four auditions I went on, it was like for a Quentin Tarantino movie, but I got really close. But it was like a slave for a new movie. And then another one was like a slave girl. And then another one like the mean ex-girlfriend. I'm like, why am I? <laughs> it's so not the opposite of my energy, but I see that people project those things onto certain types because of weight or color, you know. You, that I, you know, you get categorized, but I'm fighting it the best I can. Now, with you knowing all this information, how do yes. you think that you can kind of come in and kind of change a little bit? What would you do, or if you were to present a television show or even a stage play, how would you present that so um, mindsets can kind of change? Do you think you can well, do something? Well, you know what sometimes happens. I, you know, the, the small vehicle that I have on Young and the Restless, I try to make those kind of choices. You know, the character um, is very a business savvy woman. You know, she's been in a lot of situations where you can take the script and make choices to, so it's not. She doesn't. She never raises her voice at Neil. Mm. Like I never get my neck going too much. So you're not <laughs> trying to be mom. the angry black woman, the stereotypical angry yes. black woman that a lot of people kind of have in their minds about African American women. Right, especially gotcha. in the workplace. That's good. And, oh, that's good. And I think that she she wants to, and there's anger, but I think that's something that we fight all the time. And I will be fired, in oh, not just oh, from the office in the show, but in real life, too. You know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> but you have to have, I think it's just showing that. And so a few times I've even ad-libbed a little bit on the show when, you know, I'm angry, and I say, don't make me have to get loud up in here, Neil, because I do not, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And I'll, I'll just do it like that, you know. Ooh, you, you are, don't don't make me have to go there, so that I show that this is, you know, we know how to control that. Right. We it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you can have your anger under subjection, but still yet be professional. Yes, exactly. And let you know where I'm coming but, from. Got you. Right. Yeah. But on, if I was to produce my own show, oh, it would definitely be a goofy comedy, like Carol Carol Burnett style sketch comedy show with women of color who were hilarious. Never had anything like that, and I think it's about time for something like that. And I know a good actress you can put in there. Her name is Braylee Evans. She's hilarious. I will, Where is she from? What she, as a matter of fact, you're going to be seeing Braylee. She's going to be in Sparkle. She's going to be playing Jordan Sparks' best friend. You can also okay. um, look her up on YouTube. Hilarious young lady. You would love See, her. Full of see, energy. I like. <laughs> see, full of energy, light, and you know, funny, hilarious. You know, we have that. We don't really get to see that, you know. Prep falling and goofy and you know timing, all that stuff. Right. So yeah. So you can go to YouTube and catch her some of her things that she put up on YouTube. Hilarious young ladies. So I highly recommend uh, Braylee Evans for that. And check her out. Like I said, next month she's going to be in Sparkle, which is great. Also, too. Now I want to get back. How did you land the role in The Young and the Restless? Did you have to audition? If you did, how many auditions did you have to go through? <laughs> now this is a funny story. I told it a couple times, but I'm going to tell you this. I got the audition. One of my friends had auditioned. A couple of my friends had auditioned. And I'm thinking, you know, my friends get auditions all the time. I'm not going to audition for a soap. I don't look like a soap person, whatever. No big deal. And I get a phone call that I have the audition. I was like, are they serious? Do they? Okay, cool. I went the first time. It was like so many people who I admired sitting in that room. I was so nervous. Mm. And I was just like, okay, let me just do my job. And they looked at me, they said, can you come back with your hair a little different? And, you know, maybe. And I said, oh, okay. I'm just happy I'm coming back. Right. <laughs> and so I told my sister, and my sister was a huge Drusilla fan. So she made me watch all this show on the YouTube clips and Drusilla with all the hats and this and that. And we went to Neiman Marcus and bought an outfit. We said, this is what this black business woman will wear. And put me in the mindset. So I'm already, she's like, this is your job. This is who you are. I went back again. They called me back another time. I said, okay, I'm getting closer. Oh, my gosh. I bought a car. You bought a car? <laughs> I bought a car. I bought a, the Volkswagen that I always wanted. I didn't have the money in the bank, but I bought the car <laughs> because I said, this is going to make me get this job because I wanted to drive up on the lot. Like, okay, I'm supposed to be here. This is my new car. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. And then I told her, I said, look, I bought a car. Y'all need to give me this job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking desperate. I got to pay this bill. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I bought this car now, and I know I can do this. Just give me the opportunity. And Christoph and Darius both read with me. When, when it came down to the last wire, the, um, um, Darius actually pulled me to the side. He said, slow down. 
Mm-hmm. You talk too fast. And I do talk really fast. And I said, oh, he's right. He says, slow down. It's soaps. It's not theater. Just take your time. And I'll never forget that. And I'm always grateful for him for that. And I slowed down. And I just took a deep breath and, you know, gave it to God. And, like, that weekend, I got a phone call, not from my agent, but from a friend of the other girl who was up for the part, that she didn't get it. Mm-hmm. So I knew that I had gotten it. So it was two of you? Two of us. It was down to two of us. So they already called her and told her she didn't get it? Yeah. So you knew you and had I, it? And her friend knew called you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's Hollywood. It's only, you know... <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> well, girl, my friend didn't get it, so obviously you got the part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, now, now did, did, did you give Darius his 10% commission for telling you to slow down and you got the part? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, you should think about the dinner no, or something. <laughs> but, we, but we had fun. We had a really good time. I really enjoyed working with him. He's very talented, and so is Kristoff. I mean, those guys have been doing it for years. I mean, most of the people on the show have been on television for years. You know, even Brighton, who's on the show, he was on Full not Full House, um, what's the name of the show? I can't remember. Him and Darius were on that show for a long time. And Tatiana Ali and, you know, Stephen Nichols, who plays Tucker McCall. All of them are just pros for so long in that genre. And it was at first a difficult transition, but I, I'm happy to I feel more confident in it now. And so you, how long have you been? You've been on there about a year now? Uh, two years. Two years now? Well, time is going by fast. And I know it went by really fast. Well, we really pray many more years for you. If people wanted to follow you, are you on Facebook, Twitter? Do you have a website? Uh, yes, I am. Am on Facebook? You can find me on Facebook. It's Julia Pace Hightower. Come say hey. You can follow me on Twitter at Julia P. Mitchell. And I have a website, juliapacemitchell.com, that I'm actually revamping right now. And I'm actually doing workshops and classes on acting and getting in the business in Los Angeles, New York, and Dayton, Ohio. So come check me out. Follow me on on Twitter. I travel a lot, so I put all the pictures. I travel with my husband, all the places I've been, and where to eat and all that stuff, and where to find good plus-size clothes. I can help you all out. So. I know. That's right. All that's on your website? <laughs> yes. <laughs> website again <laughs> it's juliopacemitchell.com juliopacemitchell.com so you can help us find some plus size <laughs> yeah <laughs> tadashi it's stretchy that's always the go-to and michael kors has great plus size stuff these days too so oh uh, that is fantastic well that sounds really yeah. fun and people can find out about your classes as well on the website yes fantastic julie you are so great i thank you so much for coming on the show it was truly a pleasure having you on the show well, Lady Charmaine, you have so much energy and just it's a beautiful spirit. You can feel it through the phone. And I'm just so grateful that you gave me the opportunity to call in and talk with you today. Oh, you are so welcome. Thank you.